We took a quick break from elk hunting to drive to my brother's house, get a shower, a good meal, and complete a couple of work tasks before heading right back into the mountains. The first half of this trip had been full of excitement with elk everywhere, but noticing the increase in hunting pressure had us slightly concerned with the trailhead packed full of vehicles. From hunting whitetails, I've learned that sometimes you can use that pressure to your advantage and find those honey holes where they retreat to with increased pressure. I was just hoping that those sanctuaries would be on public land. It didn't take long to find the elk again, but we added a new tool to the tool belt. I bought an elk decoy to try and give the bulls a visual so they wouldn't hang up at 60 yards due to not having a collar behind me. first morning back in the area, we singled out a couple of bulls that we thought only had a few cows away from the big herd to see if they would be easier to slip in on. Hey, hey, I found your bull. Did you really? Yep. Are you kidding me? Nope, I swear to God. It was a, a five by five. Yep. I, Cause I was like, man, I wonder who shot this. And Justin's like, that's Tim's bull. I was like, I didn't even think of that. Oh man, well, at least there's some pose that one. Man, that sucks. I mean, he made it far, huh? Oh yeah. He's at the very, very bottom of that ridge. The, oh, the next ridge over actually, west. He must have just hightailed it. Dude, I've had to use two and a half miles. Let me see from where you shot. Finding Tim's bull was a tough one. He was happy to have the closure on his first bull elk with a bow, but upset with the way that it went down. It's never easy to lose an animal that you know is eventually going to die, but it wasn't from the lack of effort looking. It ended up being just under three miles away. Tim did the honorable thing by notching his tag on this bull, and although he wasn't able to bring home the meat, the mountain lion and bear track showed that none of the meat truly went to waste, with the crows picking the bones clean after only a week. Being there for the entire experience of Tim's first bull is something that I'll never forget. At the end of every night, I would cook up some Heather's Choice meals and write about the experience of the day in the Spartan Forge app. These journals act as a hunting log for me to remember each day's experience and learn for future hunts. The journal entries automatically link the GPS coordinates and weather data for that particular day.
outside of this thermal, thermal still might pull you in, but we can get a little, just yeah. a little closer. Yep, I'm um, thinking we were just kind of in this direction, or even, let me see. Yeah, I think we were even that direction, just a little bit, because they're going to come up. Yeah. So if we, and the wind is coming across here right now, I think we're good if we go that way, and if we start to hear it, get below us, we'll just kind of adjust. bulls bedded just across from us maybe a hundred yards away at most with cows on our side of the valley while waiting on the thermals to settle down two hunters came right up from the bottom of the valley blowing everything out with the thermals rising it's the nature of the beast and just had to keep our head up Tim left and it was back to hunting solo, trying to decide what was the best course of action with new hunting pressure from some guys that told us they weren't leaving this herd. We were sitting down eating some breakfast, I guess this morning, late breakfast around noon and then just got a text from my cousin Mason who came out here about four days ago to hunt elk. He's out in a different area and he got a five by five bull down. So pump for him, it's his first bull ever. And uh, doing it by himself, I'm just ecstatic for him. It just gives us more motivation just to keep grinding and staying after it. So we've got a bull bedded that we heard earlier this morning and uh, have an approximate location where he's at. We're gonna try to slide in pretty close and use our decoy that we uh, picked up over the, the weekend when we, we went out for a day and bought a decoy because we're having trouble with the bulls getting hung up. So gonna put the decoy that we've now named Sandra out in front of us and uh, do some soft cow calls and just play, be patient with it, try to get close and just be patient. So that's the move here for this afternoon. I was thinking these trees right here, we don't have a shot downhill where he'd be coming up to, but I'm thinking he's gonna try to circle around 
it's funny that I am usually in the position that I'm just trying to find elk, and this hunt was much different. The elk weren't that difficult to find, but getting a shot opportunity proved difficult. My limited experience elk hunting really shined at this time, where I just felt lost in what to do and what to try next. Freaking giant up in this area but never came up into the spot to check it out he's definitely wallowing here before he goes back to bed
every day I felt like we learned just a little bit more that we could use in our favor. After 14 days in the mountains, working hard to accomplish my goal of shooting a nice bull, I finally had my opportunity. We followed a good blood trail for 350 to 400 yards, but it wasn't great. There was no spraying, rather just a steady drip. As we were blood trailing, I heard his bugle way ahead of us. His bugle was easily distinguishable, sounding like he smoked cigarettes his entire life, as I mentioned earlier. At that point, my hopes had dropped off. Blood. Dude, he circled back into this thick stuff. Blood, blood blood so we found parts of the arrow as you can see here uh, it looks like I did not get a pass through but we're missing the front half of the arrow which would be essentially the broadhead side so we're missing that whole front of it and basically it's stuck in the bowl but it looks like up until here it was in the body so that plus the broadhead front that's damn good penetration um, real, so that made me feel good about it. And the blood that's on it is real red, bubbly blood. So when what I thought was I hit high lung and it looks like it might've stuck in that opposite shoulder. Maybe he had his leg back, but the, the window I had, there was nothing other than the vitals basically or high to, to be able to hit. So it feels promising with that high lung hit. It's going to take a while for it to bleed. We only found a couple drops other than this arrow. He doesn't have an exit hole so it's it's positive though we found this arrow um i mean we're probably i don't know 50 yards past where the shot was where we found found the area where he looped around and we're on his track so there's a lot of other elk in here they're actually still bugling around us now so it's going to be difficult if he starts intermingling with other elk but hopefully we find him dead before that happens we moved in really close on the herd in the evening and that was a plan to keep shadowing it and figuring out where that herd bull was gonna take the rest of the bulls, really trying to play off either him or the satellites. And once he went one direction and we had some bulls here, we got basically just directly in the center of it. And then we started realizing that the herd was kind of moving down the hill and started getting worried a little bit. So I picked up the decoy that I had out and there were some bulls going around the, the hill this way and I headed towards the loudest grueling, growling bugle, which is this, this herd bull. And as I started moving towards him, realized that he spun around and was pushing cows back to me. And so Justin and I stood there 
and I saw the cow come and I'm like, here we go. And as soon as I saw him come through the thick brush, she came out kind of in the open and she spotted us and stopped. I went to full draw, he came out 18 yards. It's pretty thick brush there, but, and his, this bull is just, I had a once in a lifetime bull and he came, came in, he stopped because the cow was stopped there and I basically had a window. There was some brush that was kind of intertwined on the top and the bottom, but had a window of his vitals there. And that's where I put, I had a 30 yard pin at 18 yards. I held it low, just below the heart and squeezed. So uh, I couldn't tell exactly where the arrow went. Justin was behind the tree over here, so he couldn't see the impact of the shot. He could see my nocturnal going through the air, which didn't stay lit, which is why we had such trouble seeing the arrow. Um, but anyways, he he couldn't see it, but when I shot, it looked like it hit high lung, if I were to guess, and he was about level playing field with us. So that's gonna be tough finding blood, but uh, nevertheless, that's a positive sign that we found this arrow here, and uh, we're gonna keep, keep working our way and trying to see if we can find more blood in these tracks. After I shoot any animal, I always take a picture on my phone from where I'm standing to where the animal is standing. It was much, much thicker than I thought it was. When you're running and moving quickly with the herd and the shot opportunity appeared out of nowhere, I was tunnel vision through my peep. Everything looked good there, but that's not accounting for your arrow sitting lower than your sight housing and the slight arc of the arrow. Knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have taken that shot with the branches all around. I own that mistake and I would do anything to take that arrow back. At this point, I still had no idea where the arrow hit. So we hiked all the way back to the truck to review the footage on the big screen. We couldn't see where the shot hit at impact, but when the bull was running away, it was obvious that it was sticking out of his back strap, a non-lethal hit. Not being able to sleep that night, we lay down for a few hours and hiked back in. I was not giving up on him. Not being able to find more blood, we tried to locate the herd. That's when we heard it. His bugle. He was still alive. Even with that, I needed to get eyes on him to feel better about the situation. Two or three days later, we were dogging the herd and got eyes on him in the thick brush. His force were giant knife blades that were unmistakable. He was acting like nothing had happened, but I never did get another opportunity at this once-in-a-lifetime bull for a guy from Pennsylvania. All I could think about were the mistakes I made and how I can be better next time. Bow hunting is hard, and it's unfortunately messy sometimes. I own this, and as always, I strive to show everything exactly as it happened, even if it's not always pretty. The mountains are a beautiful place, and I find myself looking forward to these trips more and more every year. The sights and sounds that I experienced this September will be etched in my mind forever. They're coming this way, they're coming this way. 